to you. I love starting the message off this morning with that thought, have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> God bless you. Thank you for joining us here on this Sunday morning for the sermon, sermonic message from Mount Moriah Baptist Church here in Auburn, Alabama. We thank God for each of you who have uh, had the opportunity to come on this morning, whether you're watching live as, as we're here this morning, or uh, if you're watching it on a delayed basis, we pray that God will bless you through the word of God today. I want to especially thank the Mount Moriah Church family for all of the prayers and the support that you've given to this church and to your pastor. We thank God for you. It is a blessing to know that there are saints of God out there that are praying for his church, praying for the leaders of his church, and uh, praying that God will continue to show his favor upon us. And that's exactly what God has done. We want to encourage you that if you're not a member of the Mount Moriah family, that you can find out more about us on our website, mountmoriahauburn.com, mountmoriahauburn.com. And whether you're a visitor or a, a member of Mount Moriah, if you go to the homepage, there is a, uh, a, a link there that you can send in your prayer requests, and we will take those prayer requests and take them before God. And uh, certainly, we believe that God will hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Let's go this morning to the Gospel according to St. Luke the gospel according to St. Luke. And when you found that, let's go to the 18th chapter. St. Luke chapter 18, uh, we're gonna begin reading at verse one and we'll read through several verses, I think through verse eight. St. Luke chapter 18, and uh, let's begin reading at verse one. I'll be sharing and reading this morning from the, uh, the New American Standard uh, translation, the New American Standard translation, whatever, translation that you're paying uh, or watching with, I'm sure that it'll be very, very close. Uh, <clears throat> these words are here written, beginning at verse 1. Now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not lose heart. Say, there was a certain, in a certain city, a judge who did not fear God and did not respect man. There was a widow in that city, and she, she kept coming to him saying, give me legal protection uh, from my opponent. And for a while, he was unwilling. But afterward, he said to himself, even though I do not fear God, nor do I respect man, yet because this widow bothers me, I will give her legal protection, lest by continually coming, she wear me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge said. Now shall God but now shall not God bring about justice for his elect who cry out to him day and night, and will he delay long over them? I tell you that he will bring about justice for them speedily. However, when the Son of Man come, will he find faith upon the earth? Amen. 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 Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, first of all, lifting up and praising your holy name. We come giving you, God, the glory that only you and you deserve. We come acknowledging that you're God, the only true God, and that you're God all by yourself. Now, Father, I ask that you would uh, allow me to just step aside humbly and allow your spirit to speak as the, through my words, Lord, but let them be the words that you would have your people to hear. 
God, we thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice. Now, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would uh, uh, touch the hearts, the minds, and the, especially the spirits of all of those that are listening today, uh, whether live or on a delayed broadcast. We pray that you would touch the hearts, the minds, and the spirit, and that the word might fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit as you see fit. Amen. 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 I want to talk to you this morning from this thought. I want to talk to you about the key to God's heart. All right. The key to God's heart. The scriptures uh, clearly tell us uh, that the Christian life is a life of a constant spiritual battle for the believer. Uh, that's because we have an enemy. You know, we sing that song in our churches. It's one of the, our favorites here at Mount Moriah, that I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Amen. And although I love the rhythm and I love the words of that song, it is a very, very true statement in the spiritual realm. It is theologically correct. We are on the battlefield, a spiritual battlefield. And we have an enemy, and we know who that enemy is. And his goal, our enemy's goal, is to destroy us. Now, while he knows that he has limited ability to touch us physically, mm -hmm. he does know that he can attack us spiritually and therefore disrupt our relationship in our communication with God. Yes. A key element to a strong relationship with God is communication. Uh, in a military battle, communication is absolutely essential. Those who are out on the battlefield, those who are facing the enemy, must be able to communicate with the headquarters to find out what their next move should be, All right. to find out what the tactic should be to find out what the strategy is for, for this particular offensive move or this particular neutral move. Those who are on the battlefield need to be able to, to connect with headquarters. Mm -hmm. Same thing applies in the spiritual realm. As believers, as Christians, we need to be able to connect with headquarters yeah. to find out what direction should I go in this particular situation. What tactic should I use? What, what is the strategy? And as a believer, we know that headquarters is the throne of God himself. We know that Jesus, the Bible tells us, is seated on the right hand of the Father. And that Jesus is communicating to the Father on our behalf. But it's, it's sad to say that to too many Christians, too many Christians, if we were to be honest with ourselves, take advantage of the greatest weapon that we have on a regular basis. There are two primary ways that the Christian can communicate with God. Of course, one is through his written word. God has given us his word that was given uh, to prophets of old through the, Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, and he spoke to them through the Holy Spirit thousands of years ago, and he's still using that same Holy Word to speak to us today. Regardless of the translation you use, if it is covered by the Spirit of God, it is a word that can help you through whatever situation you have. But in, in addition to the Word of God, we have the privilege of prayer. We have the privilege to go before the Creator of the universe. We have the privilege that whatever is on our heart, whatever is on our mind, whatever the need is, whatever the situation is, we can go not to an intermediary, not through someone who will take the word to, the, to God, but we have, the word of God tells us, the ability to go before God ourselves. Yeah. I'll say again, if we were to be honest, few of us do either of these means of communication as regularly as we should. Few of us read the scriptures, the holy scriptures, as often as we should. Few of us go before God as often as we should in heartfelt prayer. But I want to go on record saying this, that real prayer, uh, true prayer is hard work. All right. It's hard work because, as I've already told you, we have an enemy. Mm. How often as you as a believer 
have, have set aside some time that you know that you needed to spend with God? How often has you, have you sat and, and said, I, I just need to talk to the Father, but the minute you began to pray to God in earnest, some crazy, weird, ungodly thought comes to your mind. That is the enemy at work. Jesus knew that prayer was hard work. The enemy is constantly, constantly trying to take this weapon, this lethal weapon that we as a believer have, he's trying to take it away from us. He, he knows that with it, with prayer, with, with real heartfelt prayer, that we can reach the heart of God. All right, all right. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, Paul said, The weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. Paul knew that, that, that prayer is the only way that we can really survive in this Christian walk, the only way that we can really walk a victorious life is that if we have a serious prayer life. All right. and I want to say this. There's a difference between saying a prayer and, and truly praying. All right. All right. Come on. There's a difference between reciting something that you've rehearsed. There's a difference between reciting something over and over that you've simply heard others say mm -hmm. or even that you learned as a child. Jesus gave his disciples the model prayer. Mm -hmm. It was a model by which we can fashion our prayers. But there are believers right now who've been in the church for many years. That's the only prayer that they take when they go before God. It's what we call the Lord's Prayer, but what is really the, the, the disciples' model prayer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just find ourselves repeating words that we've heard before. We repeat something that we heard someone else say while uh, they were praying and it sounded good. So we thought that we would take that prayer and use it the next time we had an opportunity to pray in public. But I want you to know something, true prayer, prayer that comes from the heart of the believer, prayer that comes from way down deep inside, is not just repeating a set of words over and over, not just repeating something you've heard someone say or something that you heard uh, someone that sounded real good. No, I'm talking about that type of prayer. The type of prayer that not only that can uh, please somebody that we, that's li listening to us, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about learning to pray the type of prayer that unlocks the key. Uh, well, well, that is the key that unlocks, rather, the heart of God. That's right, that's right. You look through the word of God and many, uh, many great prayer warriors were in the scriptures. Solomon prayed. God gave him wisdom, made him the wisest man at the time on earth, Hezekiah prayed. God added 15 years to his life. Mm -hmm. Elijah, the great prophet, prayed and that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years. That's 1,095 days. Mm -hmm. And it did not rain for three and one half years. Jabez prayed All right. for more territory. And what did God do for him? He said, okay, and he granted him what he asked for. Yeah. The one common thread of all of those who I just mentioned is that they went to God with an earnest, heartfelt prayer. Now, 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 I want you to know that Jesus, Jesus was a mighty prayer. Luke chapter 6 verse 12 says that Jesus at times prayed all night long. We sometimes have a problem praying for two or three minutes. James chapter 4 verse 14 says that the prayer of a righteous man, the prayer of a righteous Christian, avail as much. Yeah. John 11 tells us that Jesus, even though he was the son of God, even though he was God in the flesh, that Jesus prayed at the grave of Lazarus. Mm. And when he got ready to raise Lazarus, he looked up to heaven and he said, Father, this is not for me, mm. but this is for those who are around me so that they may know that you and only you allowed this to happen. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. But before he raised Lazarus, he prayed. Now, in the text today, in the text today, we find uh, that it's not just prayer alone. Listen to me now. It's not just prayer alone, but a certain type of prayer mm -hmm. that reaches and unlocks God's heart. Here again, it's not just prayer alone, but a certain type of prayer. In this text, Jesus, uh, in the previous chapter, had just finished answering a question that the disciples asked about when 
uh, the second coming would be. Uh -huh. Jesus tells them that only the Father knows that. And then when the chapter begins in verse 1, he says that he began to tell them a prayer. And he wanted them to understand how important that prayer is. Uh -huh. He began to tell them a story, a parable, to show that at all times, men ought to pray and not faint. All right. uh, sometimes it feels like prayer is the hardest thing in the world to do. Uh -huh. That's because you've got the enemy working against you. That's right. But let me tell you the type of prayer that unlocks God's heart. Uh -huh. The type of prayer that is the key to God's heart. The word says that there was a sit in a certain city, there was a judge, and he did not fear God, and he did not respect man. Now Jesus doesn't tell us this, but we can know by reading the scriptures that the, pre that the story that Jesus is telling, he was talking about a Jewish woman, mm -hmm. and most likely a Gentile man, mm -hmm. because this woman had a legal issue. She had an issue that only the judge could help. All right. And in Jewish law, when you had legal issues, you didn't go before a judge, you went before the council, the Sanhedrin, in order to settle a legal point. All right. So we're likely talking about a Gentile judge here. But the word says that this woman, this, and not only was she just any woman, mm -hmm. she was a widow, meaning that her husband had already passed away. That's right. In this day and age, during the time of Jesus, <coughs> a woman that did not have a husband and maybe did not have sons, was really in trouble because women didn't have jobs of their own. They were only there to keep house and to raise the children. Right. So this woman was in serious need of help. The word says she came to the judge and she said to the judge, give me some help in this legal matter I have. I have an adversary that's, and I've got a legal issue and I need you to step in and help me with this situation. All right. She said, give me protection from my opponent. Give me help against my adversary. This woman came to the one that she knew could help her because the judge had the authority to make the decision. He came, she came to the one that she knew could help her. Well, where it says uh, he heard her complaint, That's right. but he didn't move to do anything about it. Where it says for a while, he was very unwilling. Mm -hmm. But you know what this woman did? She kept on coming back. She sure did. She kept trying Amen. to get the attention of the judge. She kept going before him and saying, I've got a problem I need you to help me with. The word says that after a while, after he said to himself, he said, even though I do not fear God, neither do I respect man. Mm -hmm. I don't have a fear of any man. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything. He said, but because this widow continues to bother me, I'm going to give her the protection that she has, lest she keep on coming and she wear me out. This woman refused to give up. This woman had an issue that only the judge could help her with. All right. All this right. woman had an issue that she knew that even though he had said no or had refused to help her in the past, she knew better than to quit praying and to quit asking and to quit seeking justice. So let me tell you, my friends, the key to God's heart is not just prayer. All right. But here it is. The key to God's heart is persistent prayer. Yeah. Let me say it again. The key to God's heart is not just a prayer. Mm -hmm. The real key to God's heart is persistent prayer. I mean, prayer over and over and over again. And even if you've got to pray about the same thing, even if you've got to pray about what you prayed last night, even if you've got to pray about what you prayed this morning, it does not matter. Persistent prayer is the key to God's heart. That's it. Here's a man in the judge. Here's a man didn't have any respect for man. Here's a man didn't have any fear All of God. Right. Here's a man who was powerful and in authority and didn't have to listen to nobody. But when the woman refused to quit, when she refused to stop, when she wanted to give up, she kept on coming That's anyway. Right. Right. And her persistence, her persistence is what caused the judge to change his mind. That's it. And I want to let you know something, that even in the realm of the spirit today, your persistence in prayer 
will move the heart of God. Look at what it says. It says, and the Lord said to them, Jesus said, he said, uh, uh, hear what the unjust judge has said. Now, if this unjust judge was willing to help this woman after listening to her over and over and over again, how much more will the Father in heaven yeah. be willing to help his children yeah. who continually come to him in a real need of prayer? Yeah. So often we pray about something and we say, well, I'm going to leave it at the foot of Jesus. But I want you to know something, my brothers and my sisters. It's all right to take it to God and to leave it at the foot of the cross, but you need to continue to pray. You need to continue to go before God. I mean, if you have to do it one time, if you have to do it 10 times, if you have to do it 100 times, if it's something that you've been praying about for many years and God still hadn't moved on that issue, I want to tell you today that you need to keep on praying. Yeah. There are times in the scriptures where we see that people just never did give up. I'm reminded of John chapter 5, and there was a man at the pool that was called Bethesda. Right. The Bible says that there were many people who were infirmed, that they were limping, and they were sick, lying at the pool of Bethesda. Right. But there was one man who had been there for 38 long years. He kept coming back every year hoping to be there the first one in when the water was troubled by the angel right. for 38 years he kept on coming back now some folks would have given up after the 10th year oh, yeah. possibly after year 20 or even year 30 but this man after 38 years kept on coming back because he just knew that God was going to help him at some time in the future yeah. I want to let you know that if that's something you're praying about uh, keep on praying about right. it Keep on taking it before God. Sometimes you've just got to work through your prayers. Right. Because sometimes it feels like the prayers that you pray are not getting beyond the ceiling in the house that you live. Sometimes it feels like God is just not listening to the words that are coming out of your mouth. But I want you to know that even though God hadn't answered that prayer yet, right. that God has heard that prayer. Yeah. And in his own time... God can move on whatever it is you're yeah. praying about. Remember the great patriarch Job. The Bible says that Job lost everything that he owned. Not only did he lose his family, he lost all of his personal wealth. Yeah. wealth. And then he had sores on his body from the head to his feet. And he began to pray to God about what, why, and why was he going through that type of situation. For 37 chapters, God was quiet to Job. Didn't say a word to him as Job was asking God why. You may be in a situation right now. You're asking God why. And God hadn't answered yet. Right. It was 38 chapters into the book of Job before God finally spoke to him. And then, even then, God did not answer his question. I want you to know that we serve a sovereign God. Oh, yeah. We serve a God that does what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, and the way he wants to do it. But God will answer prayer if you just persevere in that prayer. The key to God's heart is just not reciting the Lord's prayer. The key to God's heart is just not saying, Lord, have mercy every now and then. The key to God's heart is persistent prayer, yeah. daily prayer. As I was preparing this message today, God laid a convicted spirit upon my soul because there are areas in my own life that I've refused to pray to God about. You know, sometimes we kind of tell God, I got this situation, Lord. Right. I'll call you next time. But God wants to be a part of every part of your life. God wants to be a part of a persistent prayer. I had somebody tell me once, well, Pastor, sometimes I have a need in my heart to pray. I feel like God is leading me to pray, but I don't know what to say. I don't know the words to take before my Father. Well, I go to the scriptures and I read Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 27. It said, likewise, my children, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Yeah, yeah. 
Sometimes you feel weak and, and you don't even know what to say. But Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that the Spirit will help us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray or for what we should pray. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he that searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Did you hear what the Spirit said in those verses? That the Holy Spirit when you don't know what to pray the Holy Spirit when you don't know what to say the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you when you don't know the words to get to the heart of God the Holy Spirit will take your moaning the Holy Spirit will take your groaning the Holy Spirit will take your words he'll present them to Jesus and Jesus puts them in the ear of the Father hallelujah to the Lamb the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses Lord have mercy sometimes I'm weak I don't even know what I need myself sometimes I'm fearful that God won't hear my prayer because of a sinful spirit but I know I have an advocate with the Father and that advocate is the Holy Spirit hallelujah to the Lamb God bless his holy name the Spirit takes our moans the Spirit takes our groans and he takes them to the heart of God and with those moans and with those groans he unlocks the heart of God any child that knows anything about their parent knows how to get on the good side of a parent well the way we get to God's heart is not just prayer that's important now but not just prayer I mean persistent prayer keep on praying and when the words that are coming out of your mouth doesn't seem to make any sense don't worry the Holy Spirit is there to take your words and take them to the heart of God I'm reminded of a story that I once heard years ago about a little girl in church the pastor had called the church up to the altar for altar prayer and there were many that stood around the altar the pastor spoke out and said now if anyone feels led to pray out loud feel free to pray out loud there was a little girl who was troubled in her spirit the little girl came up to the altar in the altar to pray she joined hands with the one next to her and she began to say these words A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X N Y The little girl started praying the alphabet. That's all she was saying. He prayed the alphabet over and over again. She just kept on saying her ABCs. When the prayer was over, there was a lady standing right next to her. She called her off to the side. She said, child, let me talk to you a moment. I heard what you were saying during the altar prayer. She said, yes, ma'am. I've got some issues that I'm trying to deal with. and I needed to get to the heart of God. The lady looked at her and said, well, daughter, all you were saying was the ABCs. I heard you said ABC, the EFG, and on and on and on. And you kept repeating the alphabet. She said, yes, ma'am. That's what I did. The lady looked at her and said, daughter, I don't understand. She said, well, I heard the pastor say one time that when we don't know what to pray, that the Holy Spirit would take our words and give them to the Father. Right. And I just thought I'd give him the letters and he can arrange them any way he wants to to get to the heart of God. 
I'll just give the, the Holy Spirit the letters the A B C the E F G the H I J K the L M N O P the Q R S T the U V W the X Y and Z now Holy Spirit the Take the old letters, da, fix them and arrange them da, for what you know I need. Da, take them to the heart of God da, and let him know what I really need. Da, bless his name. Da, bless his holy name. Da, not just prayer, da, persistent prayer. Da, not just the Lord's prayer, da, the model prayer, da, but prayer from the very depths of your heart. Da, hallelujah to the Lord. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Bless his holy name. The Jesus the prayed on the cross of Calvary. The Father, forgive them. The they don't know what they're doing. The Hallelujah to the Lamb. The he died the on that old rugged cross. The didn't he die? The bless his holy name. The but he died the a sinner of death the so that I wouldn't have to. The Pray, da, giving God thanks. Da, pray da, when you're hurting. Da, pray when you're happy. Da, pray when you're sad. Da, and those prayers will touch the heart of God. Yes. Jesus prayed. He died on that old cross. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And all right. Three days later, God raised him up. And now he's in all power. And we have the privilege, we have the honor to go before him, not just in prayer, but in persistent prayer. Yes. Because I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that just like in the parable that Jesus told, mm -hmm. persistent prayer That's right. is the key to God's heart. Mm -hmm. If a judge that didn't respect God or man can be influenced by persistence. Mm -hmm. How much more can the Father in heaven be influenced by a persistence of prayer from his children? Amen. Keep on praying. Keep on praising. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. God is still on the throne. God still knows your needs. But James says it this way. Sometimes you have not because you ask not. That's right. Sometimes God knows what you need, but he wants you to ask him for it. Mm. He wants you to ask him for yes, it. Yes, he Go before God persistently. Persistently. That is the key to the heart of God. Persistent prayer. Pray with me. Father, we come this morning we come, God, giving you glory and honor. We come thanking you that you simply love us, Lord, more than we even love ourselves. We thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice for us. We thank you, Jesus, for loving us enough to bear the, the shame of the cross. Now, Father, I ask that if you, there's one that's listening today, at this moment or at a later date that does not know you as Lord and Savior, that they'll come to you, Lord, and even if they don't know what to say other than, I just need help. I don't know what to ask for. I just want you to be my Lord. Now, Father, I pray that you would also lay a spirit of conviction upon those of us, those of us who... Maybe we've cut slack in our prayer life, Lord. Slack in our prayer life. Lord, put a conviction, conviction spirit upon us that we need to get serious about our persistent prayers daily, hourly. Paul said that we should pray without ceasing. Always remain in a spirit of prayer. Now, Father, I ask that you save those who may not know you. You draw closer to those who need a closer walk. Yes. And we ask this all in the name of Jesus. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. We pray that 
word has benefited you today. Remember, the key to God's heart, not just prayer, but persistent prayer. Keep on keeping on. I know you prayed about it, but keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. And you can be, if you can't think of anything, they say be like the little girl. Just throw some letters up in there and say, Holy Spirit, now, you got the letters. Amen. Just arrange them any way you Amen. know I need them. May God bless you. May he keep you as I pray. Until we meet again. <laughs>